Howard Cummings, production designer for Fallout. Uh, I've seen you say that you were not a gamer before the show, but you really got into the lore of Fallout during your research. So how quickly did this transformation happen? Uh, pretty quickly, uh, because uh, I sort of had to do a crash course, and I found out the best way to do that was actually to go on YouTube and watch all the um, sort of playthroughs, tutorials, histories that the that the fans were doing, and they're super well produced, and they're very detailed. And so and that's kind of when I knew, oh, wow. And then I kind of, it, it, just by them talking about it, I got a real appreciation for the game because it was sort of unclear in the beginning how close to the game we re really were going to try to go visually. But our showrunners, Graham and Geneva, the, when I got the script, it was so connected to the spirit of the game and sort of the sort of all the parts of it, the sort of, you know, uh, the comic sort of in this, it's somewhat sarcastic and uh, also at times dopey, but also violent. It, it's got a real range, but then very dramatic, serious parts where, and uh, so, and they were so close to that, that I, I just knew that what we had to do, the real challenge was let's actually do what's there, which was scary when you thought about it. So like, like I, in our first meeting, I, I, after I made this sort of decision, I, I when I, I, printed up a bunch of references from the game because our story wasn't directly lifted from one of the games. It was a new one, which was great for me because I was getting to do new stuff. So uh, we, I put up a bunch of references on the wall and everybody came and I said, okay, this is kind of what the show is. I found, and they all go, oh, that's great. And I go, oh no, you don't understand. How are we going to do this? I had no idea how we were going to, it was so big and you know, scale and what it was. And then Jonathan Nolan, who was directing and uh, producing, uh, Jonathan, Jonah, as we call him, Jonah, Jonah, of course, wanted to bring, make it a filmic experience. Like, so we were going to shoot on film. We were going to shoot anamorphically. He wanted to go wherever we needed to go to make, to get fine, desolate locations and stuff. So we actually ended up going to Namibia for part, which is in Africa, on the coast of Africa, for when Lucy comes out of the vault. All that stuff is very real, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, so and it was I, a yeah, great but, adventure that way. So. Mm -hmm. And the show was originally set in Colorado, but you were the one who got them to change the setting to California. Right. Well, that 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 actually came from the showrunners. They really, you know, as they began to see stuff and as we were finding stuff, that that was all they they're the ones who sort of said I was relieved because I thought, oh, wow, this is great. Uh, we were seeing we were in Namibia and the water really wasn't part of the story at that point. But as, as, to their credit, they kind of like took a hold of that right away and went, oh, of course, we have to do this. And uh, and then uh, and uh, Jonah was on board with that. And then they kind of it was the same story and it, they kind of reshaped it. And 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 then, uh, you know, we hadn't gotten to the end and then they completely had uh, moved it to really tie to Los Angeles really well. Like, and they use, like, where could we go the, where the finale would be the most uh, L.A. you can get? And that was, uh, and then, and they came up with the uh, Griffith Park Observatory. So Yeah. And then when, like, Lucy comes into the wasteland, we get, we get the pier, the Santa Monica Pier, just a great shot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was amazing. So they, they really did sort of like, uh, what, and what, what's great about working with all of them is it was collaborative and it was like, and, and they, if they, if, if I would bring up stuff just out of the blue and show it to them and they thought it was cool, they would work with it and figure out how to make it work. And, you know, and then they would do the same with me. In fact, like uh, where we ended up shooting the Brotherhood of Steel, that sequence, which I really thought was great. That came from the writer's room. Somebody had gone to a retreat in in that like an artist retreat and in some of those barracks there and they said hey check this out so based on that i looked at it and i said oh this is this is awesome can we go there and um so and we figured it out we had we had a small uh, you know uh in each of the places actually we 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 try to do the away stuff in a kind of leaner fashion but it was important to tell the story and give it scope
Yeah, for sure. Um, well, you just got your sixth Emmy nomination um, for your work, um, and and you were nominated specifically for the series premiere, which you know, I mean, you got you, you have to introduce everything, um, all the different worlds and sets. And I want to talk about the vaults first because it's oh, yeah. like you're saying, you know, like it's about the scope and scale, and those vaults look humongous, and there's a lot of depth. To it, but, and I know you guys really tried to minimize um, CGI use. So what went into developing and building those wall vaults? Uh, well, we did. I mean, it, the sets were really pretty big and, you know, like kind of shockingly big. And and, uh, and then uh, Graham and Geneva, the showrunners, had written in a room that doesn't exist in any of the other vaults. And it was a cornfield. And they described it sort of as like, like you're in it and you think you're in Oklahoma, a uh, verse, you know, the musical Oklahoma. And I went, so not meant to be completely real, but, you know, in talking about it, I was asking questions like, oh, okay, is it a cornfield? Are they actually living off some of this corn? Is it like an acre of corn or is it like a 4-H, you know, training? So when you get on the surface, this is know how to grow corn. And they said, oh no, it's a it, they're actually eating the corn, which is funny because we put corn in almost everything they're eating, you know, which is cream corn, you know, every uh, every kind of thing you could think of corn wise. And also, uh, so uh, they had originally written it that the walls were painted in a mural. And I and I and I did bring up the idea of like maybe it's projected that way we could change the time of day. There's a wedding in the, that opens up the show. And I said, oh, then they could be, get married at sunset and they could dance in the dark. And then Jonah Nolan went, yeah. And then during the fight, they, somebody could shoot it out and you'd see it all come come apart in the like a film and explain that it really is a film. And so uh, that's what I'm saying. That sort of like collaborative thing was great. So to achieve all that, and and we didn't use CGI. We actually, what we did is we set up a, a digital stage called the volume. And that's a, a, and so, you know, it's like a stage full of TVs, it's huge. And um, uh, we projected all of that. And, and, uh, and so, uh, so then the actors are actually in a real environment with real lighting. So when the lighting changes at all, you know, they're not acting against green screen. So we did try, a lot of it we tried to make real. For instance, the power armor, Jonah's mandate. In right, the right behind you. That, uh, yeah, right, right there. And then you can see, actually, this is here, I'll tilt up a little. This is actually um, Ella Purnell standing in Namibia next to the power suit. The guy, in the, his name was Shippy, was the guy in the suit. And there's a, somebody holding an umbrella to shield them from the sun. And people walk in my office and they go, oh, that was real? I go, it's real. It moved. It did. So figuring in that out was a real was a real challenge, and which is good. But um, but we could do that. And then we want, so we tried to make as much of things tactile and real, like going to Namibia, because we could have shot, a lot of times people use that digital stage for away places like Namibia wasteland, but we actually went to the wasteland and used, we use the, in that example, uh, for instance, the cornfield and that room is huge. The other place that was really big that was when Lucy goes out that door, that giant door uh, in, in Lee's Vault 33, that's also uh, in the digital stage, except that I made the door. Mm. Uh, so I made a, so I made a giant door and everything like else is just pieces. It's like all pieces. Yeah. But it, it making the giant door was a commitment, but it made that room feel real. Like a lot of people go, that that was a real room. I go, no, it wasn't real. Room. Yeah, I think the show, like all together with, with the sets and also the costuming and everything and um the cinematography, it everything feels real, but also artificial like a game. Yeah. All right. We're always treading the line. I mean, uh, one thing uh, I learned real fast was from the, you know, once I sort of showed the initial concepts that Bethesda people went, oh, you're doing the game. And I said, yes. And they were excited <laughs> and they started sharing stuff. In the beginning, they weren't quite sure what we were doing. And I wasn't quite sure if I was going to be told I had to. I was never told that I had to do it a specific way. I only did it based on the script and what Jonah wanted. And then, and then I, what I used Bethesda, I, we were creating new stuff. So I would go to them. I want to stay within the game. So it, 
I would make proposals to them and throw it at them and they would vet some of that as well. Like for instance, there's a sequence where they're all like, it was meant to look like, um, uh, oh, 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 I'm blanking. Uh, it, it, which were all the vault tech executives are underground around the table. I don't mm -hmm. know if you thought, yeah. And, yeah. and it's like, uh, uh, it's Dr. Strangelove. We wanted to, we directly lifted it from Dr. Strangelove, which is one of the fun things about the game was because we were lit, we were referencing movies from that year from. Yeah, from it's the, retro futuristic and. We were, yeah, so yeah. I could reference stuff from the 50s. You know, uh, what's funny is my Emmy category is um, the uh, uh, dreaded what everybody always, it's funny, it's like. It's a, period, it's a fantasy. Period and fantasy, period yeah. fantasy category. So they're very disparate people in it. Well, one of my friends who's on one of the other show who designed one of the other shows called me up and he said well, you're actually the only one who actually covers both sides of that by the way that's very true because <laughs> and i was like yeah. i was like <laughs> yeah it is you know because of the retro futurism it's also period but it's also sci-fi and fantasy so mm -hmm. uh it was cool but we uh but that game where they're all sitting around the table there's a big map behind them and it's supposed to show all the vaults with the little little dopey lights on it and um they hadn't actually done that in the game and i suddenly had it, it was like we we're going to shoot it in like three days and i said Bethesda has to tell me where these vaults are because I went through the game and we figured out where the ones were, but they hadn't listed it everywhere. So they actually chipped in and they wanted because they knew people would sit down and look oh, at the yeah. map. All, all the diehard fans were just looking yeah. and very uh, quickly. Which is one of the reasons I kind of left the states vague. Also, it's 13 colonies, you know, because of the game. So there's a whole mm -hmm. it's um, it's not it's not like the map our the current map of the United States. Yeah, for sure. Um, I also love um, when Lucy's like walking into uh, Philly, the the landfill, the junkyard. And that that was incredible. So what went into that and producing? Oh, that? okay. So uh, yeah, it was funny too because okay. So uh, in researching, you know, I, we we based Philly off of there's a, a couple of things in the game, Megaton City, and there's one in Fenway Park in Boston. It's a very similar, and uh, but. I also, I also researched real things too. We didn't always just strictly pull from the game. We, and I found online this, uh, there was a um, junkyard in New Jersey that had only existed, it started right after World War II and it ended right at around 1965. So everything just in the, the time junkyard the is, <laughs> yeah, and I was going, and, and uh, the pictures were online because people would go on photography tours of it, you know, and like they had photography clubs going there. And I'm going, oh my, and it was near an air base. So it had like a street of school buses from the period of the 50s with jets on, stuck on top of them and helicopters and just stacked on top. And I just was like, it's like the Grand Canyon of junkyards. I was just so, it was the first thing I showed John, Jonathan Nolan. Much, but, and it was a, technically in a way location. So I had to do a lot of convincing about why we would move the entire company down to this place north of Atlantic City. It's called Wade, Wade's, Wade Salvage. And um, and uh, and I said, you'll, your teeth will fall out when she's getting it's, and it it's was like a time capsule it must that's what it, it, was, it was fantastic it the unfortunate part of it is that lucy walks from that into my set so it had to, my set had to match that you know be as good as that was yeah. and so, it, it's also great because of the contrast because she's coming from the vaults oh, the, they're so bright and everything is so like there's so many patterns there and it's really heightened and exaggerated and everything is dour and you know, yeah, like the first thing was my favorite thing was that she's walking through some cars, yeah. like a bunch of 1940s cars that are all rusted and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's in a forest. Well, what happened is those cars got put there and the forest grew up. They've been there so long, the forest grew up around it. So that was all real. And she's like looking at all this stuff. And I was going, this is like, I've never seen anything. It's kind of beautiful, you know, that the, seeing these rusty cars in this forest, just so many of them. It was beautiful. Yeah. So. It, it's kind of great that like it seemingly no one touched them all this time. Just let, let it. No, like they, they're a salvage yard. You know, I, they, <laughs> they keep a lot of stuff, you know, but they also have a different part of their salvage yard, which is active. That was kind of like the family one that they inherited and they kind of kept it, 
they kept it and uh, you know you should have seen their office was insane i would go in there the stuff that they had in their office but it was a super fun place and actually right nearby uh, there was a big giant sand quarry so some of lucy walking in namibia on the way there was done like a, a um, half a mile away in this sand quarry that looked like she came up over a thing and I put a giant airplane wing stuck in the sand with a sign on it saying Philly this way and that's all real so that wasn't CG so because we found that I found that real place next to it which was a good transition between the sand dunes and pine trees yeah for sure um, what was your favorite design from season one uh, well uh, uh, uh uh i probably oh the, well you know the one that was most fun to make i think was probably the verdi bird mm. because, oh, oh you know, the, the, the helicopter yeah and yeah, the yeah. reason it was fun is because we we had a great uh um welder guy his name is sharpie and uh he was a bigger than life character and we had a lot of welding uh, it was a lot of welding and more welding than i think every show i ever done and but i go i and I, we're talking about it and he goes I think we should make it like a real plane. And I said, what, instead of fake? He said, no, no. He said, I went to high school. When I went to high school, I studied, that's how I first studied welding. And uh, we I studied from a guy who made planes. And so I started first welding in aluminum. He said, let's just make it out of aluminum, and which we did. So it was all handmade out of aluminum, which also meant it was structurally st strong and lightweight. Those were all good things. So it was all hand riveted out of little pieces. And so, and then I got, I went to the shop where we made it and, uh, and he introduced me to his professor, his high school teacher who he hired to come back and help supervise that project. Oh my God. Uh, which That's was incredible. amazing. And so, I mean, it was stuff like that, that happened, but that was probably the most fun. Cause it's such a, it's like a cross between uh, one of those helicopters called an Osprey that kind of goes like this, you know, with, you know, goes up. And it's then, again, something else that seems real, like from our but world. It looks like a goldfish. Yeah. You know, but also a little thing. bit off somehow. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah so um, all that, you know, we could have made that out of plastic or a lot of things or not really care, but you could actually shoot the outside uh, John, way, the way Jonathan Nolan wanted to shoot, we were going in and out of it. And so it had to look this, it had to look, real and so the only way to do that was to make her actually make, make it out of aluminum yeah. yeah um well lastly uh you know season two has been ordered so have you started work on season two yet but i am i say the mess that right that is part of that yeah all the flow that. charts and things yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah no i'm doing that and so uh the new season it what's not uh, i can say is in going to new vegas mm -hmm. uh because you saw that at the end of season not one. a spoiler we, we saw that not a spoiler it, it and uh that uh that game so we are actually closer to the game we're not at the same time so there's so it is not this we're not recreating that game exactly in that way it's a whole different story based on you know what the time frame is. so it's it's gonna be it's fun because i love the characters in that area are in the game are really kind of in all new and over the top and there's new creatures and robots and all that so i'm having a lot of fun like and i and we uh we're actually shooting this time we're shooting in on the west coast yeah, you're, go, you're uh, actually in california this time <laughs> yeah we're actually in california and so and not too far from the mojave and so uh uh which is great so i'm i'm excited and uh you know because uh, there's lots of fun stuff to do uh, well, can't wait for that. Uh, well, Howard, it was great speaking with you. Thanks so much for your time and congratulations again on everything. Oh, thank you. Thank you.